Cherubs, this past year I took a break from teaching and art history to study and travel in Italy and the UK. This summer I'll be taking a short break from my usual videos to share what I learned and take a closer look at one of my new favorite art forms. Cheese. So Cherubs, milk starts here, with milk. Or milk producing animals in general, I guess. Milk producing animals are called mammals, which means creature of the breast, because these animals nourish their young from the breast. Milk, consequently, has been called food for beginners, and cheese is a way to preserve this rich source of protein, fat, and calcium for longer than a couple days. Our most important animal for milk production is the cow, so let's talk about how that milk is produced. About 30 million years ago, the Earth's warm climate became seasonal and many plants evolved to grow quickly and produce seed capable of surviving the winter. The resulting grasslands became fibrous hay and leaves filled with indigestible cellulose during the cold seasons. We, as humans, can't fully take advantage of this fiber, even though it covers a huge portion of the Earth's surface. But there is a type of animal capable of extracting the nutrients from this abundant resource inside their body. These animals built a co-evolutionary relationship with certain microbes capable of producing cellulase, an enzyme capable of breaking down cellulose. We call these animals ruminants, because, you know, they're pensive. Ruminants, like cows, have four chambered stomachs that account for a fifth of their body weight and contain literally trillions of microbes capable of digesting this otherwise indigestible material. The microbes break down the fiber in the first stomach, then the cow regurgitates the food, chews on it a bit to break it down further, and then passes it into the other chambers. The nutrients are passed into the bloodstream, which carries them to the mammary gland, and milk. Just as the ruminants built a symbiotic relationship with these microbes, early human populations built a co-evolutionary relationship with ruminants by protecting, herding, and breeding them. These animals produce nutrient-rich milk and beef out of poor quality plant material. They turn grass into this and this. So I guess cheese starts with grass. Different breeds of cow are better suited for different climates and landscapes. Cows living and feeding in the Alps will evolve differently than cows living in the grasslands of southern England and so the chemistry of the milk varies based on the type of feed available to the cow given its particular landscape. And this brings up an interesting theme, something food people call terroir, the taste of the land. Cheese is, from this perspective, a concentrated expression of the land it is produced on. So the climate and soil favor particular types of grass. The cows evolved to best take advantage of that grass. The grass then becomes milk, microbes native to the land that ferment the milk, and the cheesemaker, who will be influenced by the traditions and history of that land, will guide that fermentation towards cheese. Cheese is climate, biology, history, culture, and love concentrated. So most cheeses take the name of the area that they're produced on. Parmigiano from Parma. Camembert from Camembert. Stilton from Stilton. Still not sure what I mean? Here's a couple of examples. In 1891, a cheesemaker named Emil Frey developed a cheese in Monroe, New York called Leberkranz. When the Monroe Cheese Factory moved to Van Wert, Ohio in 1926, they took their equipment, their starter bacteria, and their staff and tried to make Leberkranz. Unsuccessfully. After a few failed attempts, they tried smearing the residue left on the wooden aging boards they left in Monroe onto the new tiles in their factory. This worked, most likely because the corniform bacteria migrated from the tiles into the vats and gave the cheese the special flavor of Monroe. Everything matters. Many plant species contain terpenes, a natural defense against microorganisms. About 60,000 different types of terpenes have been identified, and some of them become volatile compounds in milk that produce a pleasant smell. Cows left to graze in the Asiago Plateau encounter plant species and terpenes that no other cows will. Consequently, chemists can tell if an Asiago cheese was produced with Asiago cows feeding on Asiago plant life by identifying these compounds. It can't be faked. Real Asiago comes from Asiago. So when you eat cheddar made here, in Devon, in the southwest of the United Kingdom, you're tasting this land and connecting to this culture. It's produced with grass grown from its soil, cows who have evolved to love that grass, microbes that have grown to love that milk, cheese makers who have grown to love those microbes, and a population of people who have grown to love the resulting cheese. By eating cheese produced in this way, you're connecting to a culture and a group of people you may otherwise never meet. So I guess cheese starts with the relationship between land and the people.